Hi everybody, it's James with Crypto Conscious, and my, 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 what a destructive week in crypto and on the cosmos. If we look at Luna Token, the sister to UST, we can see it has dropped massively by 99.9%, and currently UST is trading well below its peg of $1. Look how steady this peg was right up until now. They're doing everything they can to revive it, but today, combining a little bit of tokenomics and economic theory with graphs, I wanna look at how Terra and Luna worked how the coin devalued, the current solutions for this problem, and a quick look if they are enacting these solutions or not. All right, so let's get into this bloody, dark, depressing day on the cosmos. Okay then, so let's have a look at what happened. So a stablecoin losing its peg is serious business, and millions of people have been using Anchor Protocol for UST just so they can get 20% safe returns a year. Drawing an economic downturn like this, by putting your stable coin in here, as long as it remains stable, you're able to cash out 20% extra a year, which is way better than what the banks are offering. It has been argued that this was unsustainable and used to get customers. Others would disagree and say that by using the platform, there are fees and these fees are redistributed and therefore it is achievable. But I'm not here to say yay or nay about that. I'm looking at why this crash is not an easy fix. So firstly then, here's a graph I made to represent UST. Now, don't be scared by it, let me quickly explain. So we can see that the current price is $1. So it's currently at its peg that it's maintained for a long time. Furthermore, this is the supply line. So according to economic theory, if the price is below $1, the producers and holders are less willing to supply this to the market. As the price rises, and in this case, as the price gets to above a dollar, more people will be willing to supply this to the market. To be honest, I expect that this line would actually bend in this direction because even as this equilibrium price creeps over a dollar, more people will be willing to use arbitrage to burn this for Luna and make some money from it. Now, here is the demand for this. The general consensus is if the price is above a dollar of UST, there'll be very little demand for it. You might as well keep your dollar. Unless you've looked at the market and think that getting 20% over a year is a worthwhile investment. If you're only getting around 4% interest in banks and you get 20% interest from buying UST and staking it, then some people would still be willing to pay more than $1 for this UST, but not that many. As the price drops further, arbitrage opportunities will exist for people to buy more and more of this at lower prices. And as I said, this is the equilibrium price. This is where total supply, so everybody selling this coin, and total demand, everyone buying this coin, meets somewhere in the middle and agree on a price. At least that's the theory anyway. So moving forward. Okay, so I've made two graphs here first. And I'm just explaining how the UST and Luna mechanism works. So on this Luna graph here, I haven't put any changes on it yet. It's just demand and supply. And if you notice, I did not put a dollar here because the price of Luna is way more flexible than the price of UST. As we have seen, it's gone from over $60 for one to now less than a dollar. So let's say there's a surge in demand for UST. Loads of people are buying it. It now costs more than a dollar. Now, Luna, the sister token, these guys have an incentive to burn their Luna, remove their Luna from the market in exchange for UST. They can take a fraction of the profit from this transaction, and this is known as arbitrage. If this occurs, the supply of Luna reduces, pushing up the price of Luna to this new equilibrium here, and the supply of UST increases. So what we can see now is if we look at E2, price of Luna has gone up. So this reduction in supply of Luna increased their price, and the increase in supply of UST has reduced the price back down to $1. So really in those two movements, E1 simply moved to E3. So this increase in supply from here to here got all the way up to 12 billion, but it still managed to maintain its peg. So it still managed to maintain the value of $1. And as we saw, Luna shot up in value to around $60 per token. So that was what was happening basically. People were bullish on UST, so they would burn their Luna in exchange for UST, keeping it as is. Now what happens in the reverse, you may ask? Well, the opposite would happen they burn UST for Luna. So simply, the supply of UST would reduce, the supply of Luna would increase. Now, as you can see here, this brings about an interesting situation. This would make the value of UST increase. And if we move down here from E1 to E2, we would see the value of Luna go down. As I said, there was normally a balance here where if the price of UST was too high, people would buy their Luna, burn UST, push the supply back down and benefit from the price difference. Obviously, you have to have faith in the price of Luna and the price of UST to continue down that path. Now, herein comes the problem. So initially, there's been a claim that large organizations decided to attack this UST. There are multiple reasons why this could occur. One could be a rival stablecoin. It could be traditional banks and governments wanting to weaken sentiment in the crypto market. Or it could be bad actors shorting Bitcoin to make lots of money. I'll explain that in a moment. The logic is the withdrawal of UST for Luna was so big in the initial stages that it went beyond the simple model of using arbitrage to fix it. After the first initial huge stock where massive amounts of UST were pulled out in exchange for Luna, the moment this massive pullout occurred, many people and large institutions followed suit. And we can see within two days, more than 75% of 14 billion was withdrew from the Anchor Protocol. That is no joke. How on earth can you recover from that? All of this pulling out of UST and then swapping for Luna. 
saw an immediate price crash of Luna. And as you know, these prices are related to some extent. The Luna value depreciated much faster than the UST value did. So this led to the problem where people were burning UST for Luna and getting more and more Luna thus increasing the supply of Luna and collapsing the price. So this supply massively went forward here. Not only this, because of market sentiment and everybody pulling out, how do you think demand went this line? Do you think people were more willing to buy it or less willing? Clearly less willing, right? So if we combine those lines on these graphs, on both graphs, I've reduced the demand. Look what happens here. So we started on E1, we moved up to E2, and then bang, straight down to E3. So actually now we are de-pegged with UST. But on the other side, look what happens to Luna. They have an even worse problem. They went from E1 to E2 to E3. So from these economics graphs, we can really identify how serious this crash in the market was, with Luna crashing much harder than UST. Now, the most important question that we're all thinking is, how do we get back to stabilization? Having a look at this graph, we can see there are two ways. The first way, increase demand to get back up to here. The second way, reduce supply to get back up here. Ultimately, the leadership team of this organization should be doing both. Now, let's have a look how. All right, so let's firstly look at demand. Now, I know Terra that has created this UST out of thin air, essentially from trading Luna. But what people don't really understand is people are still using US dollars to buy this, right? So actually, they have a massive fund of dollars. Now, people don't really understand this, but banks actually create money out of thin air as well. I won't go into this in too much detail, but it's as simple as this, okay? Every time you deposit money in a bank, they are allowed to loan out 90% of that. So imagine this, customer A goes in, gives the bank $100. They hold 10, they give out 90. Now, customer B, the person that borrowed the money, he keeps that money in the bank as well. The bank is legally allowed to give out 90%. So they hold $9, give out 81. And this cycle continues. Governments can change this reserve ratio depending on how they want the economy to go. But banks also create money and you need to understand that. And you also need to understand that if more than 10% of the people went to the bank asking for their money back, they couldn't get it. This is known as a bank run. However, over time, they would be able to get it. Why? Because they're protected by the government. Now, Terra deliberately did not want governmental protection. So what do you think they spent those billions of dollars they received on? Bloody Bitcoin. So they call this the Lunar Foundation Guard, right? And if we look closely, we can see what the Lunar Foundation Guard has spent all this money on. Look at that, 2.67 billion worth of Bitcoin. Some Luna and some AVAX. Instead of relying on banks, instead of relying on other currencies, why not have a backup reserve of around 3.3 billion, which is around 30%, isn't it? And like we saw, banks only have 10%. They've got a backup reserve of 30. But it doesn't bloody help when 70 or 80% of your investors pull out, does it? Bank runs are never that severe. And it doesn't help that since they bought the Bitcoins, they've been on a steady market downturn, essentially reducing the value of their market investments by almost a third. So basically, with their protection, to get their UST back up to $1, with about 20, 30% reserves, after 70, 80% of people are pulling out, it's bloody impossible. So what happens is they can sell these Bitcoin reserves or they can loan them out. They're also loaning them out to get money every day in order to get daily returns, which they can use to increase the demand of UST. So by doing this, they increase the demand of UST here, but it's not enough to increase the overall demand. The reduction in demand for this coin will absolutely exceed the artificial created demand by the organization. So while this will help a little bit, unfortunately, as this demand increases and it pushes up the value, people aren't going to wait for it to get back to the top. They're going to cash out. And cashing out would normally push up the price, but the reduction in demand is too steep. So ultimately, the new demand will be all the way back here. So whatever countermeasures they're taking is still not enough. So that's the first solution they are actively doing. Selling Bitcoin, unfortunately, that's going to flood the market and reduce the price of Bitcoin. And they're also loaning out Bitcoin as well. The second solution is reducing the supply. With the price crashes of Luna, nobody's trying arbitrage at the moment. People are too scared, they'll lose money. By burning your UST, you're getting massive amounts of Luna that keeps dropping in value. So how is the team trying to reduce the supply? Well, let's have a quick look. So the team have a new proposal, 1164. They want to accelerate the burn rate, as I said, reduce supply. So the community pool that was used for projects, that was used for development of the ecosystem, bang, they want to burn them all. Get rid of that supply. They want to burn the cross-chain UST on Ethereum. And of course, they have to stake some Luna so somebody doesn't come in and take over the governance. This will remove about 11% of supply. And looking back at the graph, the question is, is this really enough? It's really tough. So ultimately, if we look here, they are doing what they can. They are doing what they can to increase demand, trying to reduce foot in the market, trying to instill confidence, make sure people want to buy these tokens again. Make sure people have their trust in these tokens. They are also selling Bitcoins to fund artificial demand. They are also loaning out Bitcoins to receive interest to pump UST. They are also actively making policies and proposals to reduce the supply. Now the question is, will they be able to get back up to one? The answer is, if enough liquidity leaves the market, eventually yes. If they can hold on to most of their Bitcoin and get daily interest, eventually this could balance out. But at what loss? Now, this is the ultimate question, isn't it? This was supposed to be stability on the Cosmos. The Cosmos has now lost its stable coin. 
When the market is in a downturn now, I've got no stable coins to buy for safety. And when there is a market downturn, this is the ultimate test. And unfortunately, they have failed this test this time. It is my hope that this project does not disappear because ultimately I believe Bitcoin will go up in value and their investments and safety mechanisms will come into fruition and it will be harder to run this kind of attack again. But it's so disappointing. The effects of this are widespread, not just in the cosmos, but for all crypto. Crypto represents real anonymity and non-reliance on banking systems. And if this fails, it's a major setback for many of us. On a more serious note online, I have seen people discuss about losing their fortunes and their investments of what they thought was a safe investment and threatening to hurt themselves over it. If things get really bad and you are heavily in debt, there are societal mechanisms to help you out. You can declare bankruptcy and start from zero. It will be a challenge, yes, but it is possible. For others, this needs to be sucked up as a life lesson. I've lost a considerable amount of money on this, but I'm not perturbed. You are here for a reason and you are worth more than the money in your bank account. Don't forget that. This has been a dark month for all of us on the Cosmos system, but we will pull through. Ultimately, I believe this sovereign interoperable technology is the future and technology will win out. All right, guys, thank you for listening. It took me a while to make those graphs. I hope the next video will be a bit of a happier one. Anyway, that's it from me, James at Crypto Conscious. I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you again.